so in this video we'll be talking about the eukaryotic translation actually uh, we have already talked about the prokaryotic translation or which is also called as a prokaryotic protein synthesis now in this video we'll be looking at the protein synthesis process in uh, eukaryotes the thing here uh, when we talk about the prokaryotic translation sometimes people may uh, think that that process is complicated but if you look for eukaryotic the process becomes much more complicated because in eukaryotes instead of some small proteins we have more proteins and protein complexes to involve together uh, for the protein synthesis to occur properly and why not because the protein synthesis is one of the most important part one of the most important thing inside a cell that is going on right so that's why it is complicated but if you with me throughout the slides and the session I think I'll make you able to understand what is eukaryotic translation now uh, for our understanding I divide this in three different sections and three different videos actually uh, I'll talk about the eukaryotic translation uh, initiation which is the most important and complicated part uh, and which differs a lot from the prokaryotic initiation and then uh, we'll be talking about the eukaryotic translation elongation and eukaryotic translation termination so these are the different three stages now so before beginning the actual topic here I must tell you that the process of translation in prokaryotes and in eukaryotes uh, they are similar in many aspects because if you divide this translation into three sections like initiation elongation and termination what we'll find here for uh, so so let's let's write it down here let's write it here let's say prokaryotes here eukaryotes here and let's write down the different stages uh, in let's say initiation stage elongation stage and termination stage so now if we look inside the initiation for the prokaryotes and eukaryotes are different hugely different I mean uh, the eukaryotic uh, initiation for translation is hugely different from the prokaryote uh, and it involves much more proteins and complex and many more things uh, for the process to start so the difference is highest between these two in initiation now if you look at the elongation phase it's more or less similar with the prokaryotes the eukaryotic elongation is more or less similar like the uh, that of the prokaryotes but uh, the difference is between the after the production of proteins and polypeptide chain in eukaryotes it is transported inside different compartments because the eukaryotic cell is compartmentalized it has endoplasmic reticulum it has different organelles like mitochondria Golgi bodies and all these different regions inside the cell where the protein will move and then further modified before the destination of, uh, of the protein delivery so those modification is there but more or less so slightly uh, medium difference between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic elongation but if you look at the termination process for prokaryotes and eukaryotes in translation they are almost they are almost similar and involve same kind of uh, protein complexes okay so this is it so it, it differs mostly in the initiation stage and initiation stage for the eukaryotes is very much difficult and it's complicated so we will be talking about the eukaryotic translation initiation uh, first in more details then we'll talk about other things in sequential way so if you look at the different stages of translation in eukaryotes you can divide start with initiation elongation and termination the initiation phase can be divided further in certain small groups and small uh, small par par parts or purposes for example uh, the first thing is the assembly of factors with the 40s to produce the 43s complex which is the very first thing to form second thing is the addition of mrna or attachment of the mrna with the 43s complex third part is the scanning through that mrna to find the actual start codon which is AUG and finally the attachment of large ribosomal subunit which is 60s subunit to the rest of the subunit complex to form the actual translation complex okay so this is the initiation this is the different stages of initiation even in eukaryotes now the elongation phase is very similar because in elongation phase uh, the, there are two major stages first stage is the peptide bond formation between the amino acid sequences that are being carried out uh, by this tRNA tRNA will bring all those amino acids and those amino acids will be attached with each other one after another together like this so that is the peptide bond formation 
after the bond is formed we have the translocation that is the shifting of ribosomal subunits one codon from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction so the directionality again is the same like the prokaryotes that is 5 prime to 3 prime uh, and the termination stage is extremely similar with the prokaryotes we require uh, re release factor 3 release factor 1 and release factor 2 so bring all this together and also ribosome recycling factor which will uh, finally disassemble 60s subunit from 40s subunit and we have everything recycled so if you look at uh, all these stages they are also kind of similar with that of the prokaryotic translation so it's my idea that you should first understand prokaryotic translation very well so for that you can go to my youtube channel and search for the translation video uh, hopefully i put a link here in the description as well as in this video somewhere here so click this link uh, in the annotation to uh, redirect yourself to that uh, prokaryotic translation you'll have video on prokaryotic translation lecture as well as i have videos on prokaryotic translation animation so you can watch both of them so uh, once we know these are the different stages of translation now it's time to move on and look for the different stages in more details right so let's talk about uh, the first stage that is the initiation of eukaryotic translation so here we are and we are talking about the eukaryotic translation at the very first stage for eukaryotic translation is the initiation of eukaryotic translation and I must tell you that the initiation phase for eukaryotic translation is the most important phase of all uh, of, of all this process and also this is very very important and is it is also very much complicated so let's look at here wh how why it is complicated and how this process actually works so if you begin with it I divide this process of initiation into three actually four different stages four different parts mainly first part is the assembly of other factors to form the pre-initiation complex it's called pre-initiation complex 43s pre-initiation pre complex once that is formed the second stage is the attachment of mRNA with this pre-initiation complex okay the third stage of this process is the scanning scanning of the mRNA to find out the start codon or AUG and after that the fourth stage is the assembly of 60s ribosomal subunit and and actually form the functional unit for the translation so these are the different four stages we can divide the initiation of eukaryotic translation so let's look each of this independently this is the first stage and the formation of 43s pre-initiation complex and if you look at here the idea is that this is the 30th this is the 40th subunit remember the 40th subunit here or the 60th subunit whatever say 60th subunit this is the 60th subunit this is the 40th subunit and actually these subunits these ribosomes are not made every time we need to synthesize a new protein actually ribosomes are there inside the cell they are ready so every time the whole process is done ribosomes are recycled and they are used so this image as you can see it here this this is the complex from the previous translation cycle now after that 60s subunit 40s subunit are separated from each other so as the mrna so as the other other factors all of these things are recycled so what we see now this is the start point if you begin from here if this is the start point we've got 40s complex a subunit we've got uh, the initiation factor we've got the elongation factor and all this mainly initiation factors so the eukaryotic initiation factors that are important for the initiation of eukaryotic translation are called as a termed as small e for the eukaryote then capital IF for initiation factor now this can be initiation factor a b c d e or it can be initiation factor 1 2 3 and so on okay so that's how we name the initiation factors so at the very beginning if you start it with we have the 40s subunit of the eukaryotic ribosome with that initiation factor 3 comes in and bind to the E site because it needs to block the E site just like the prokaryotes because if we don't block the E site 60s complex can pair at the very beginning we don't want 60s to be assembled we can only ensure that the only P site becomes free because the first 
tRNA should be placed. The F met tRNA should be placed in the P site, not any other site. So for that, initiation factor 3 blocks the E site and also initiation factor 1 and 2 they blocks the A site. So actually this blocking is very very important. Once this blocking is done, then we have the P site free to interact with the first tRNA that is carrying the F met or formylated methionine. Okay, so now if you look at here, what we need here now along initiation factor 2 comes in and also initiation factor 2 brings that first tRNA that is the F met tRNA as you can see here. So this is the F met tRNA and initiation factor 2 which is a GTPS protein will bring this F met tRNA to the place and it will bind this tRNA to the P side there. So as you see here, so now we have 40S ribosomal subunit and we have P site free. We have the e initiation factor 3 and 5 they are attached in the A site, E site which is blocking and the initiation, fa along initiation factor 2 along with the tRNA is at now at the P site. But if you, re if you re re remember this very carefully, if you, if you look at this image very carefully, you can find that this tRNA that we see here is not properly placed, it's not properly attached to the P site because there is no mRNA. So if there is no mRNA, how could this tRNA will pair, right? So it just is in place, mRNA still is not in this place. So this is called the 43S pre-initiation complex where we don't have any mRNA, we only have 40S subunit, we have initiation factor 3, initiation factor 5 blocking the E side and we have initiation factor 2 binding with the tRNA with the GTP. So this is the first stage of initiation in eukaryotic translation. After that we look at the second stage which is the attachment of mRNA. So now same thing is going on, the same image we have right now. Now what we will have, we have that mRNA. Now if you look at the mRNA, you can see the structure like this. This is the mRNA structured in eukaryotes because in eukaryotes the mRNA is processed after the production. So you can see here at the at the 3 prime end we have the polyadenyl tail, at the 5 prime end we have the capping of methylated guanine. So as you, as you can see here, this is the AUG, that is the start codon and let's say this is the stop codon. It's kind of given. This is the stage of nucleotide sequence which will code for the protein, for example. So this is the mRNA and for the binding of mRNA to this 43S initiation complex, we require other enzymes, other proteins. For example, initiation factor 4F and initiation factor 4E and they form what is called the initiation factor 4F complex. So initiation factor 4G and E and F and B. So all of them IF4, A, G, E and B and F, they combine together to actually call it an initiation factor 4F complex. Now that complex will bring, it will attach to this tRNA, uh, mRNA. So how it will attach as you can see it here. This complex with the help of this initiation factor 4E, Remember this initiation factor 4E, this is very very important. Why? Because this complex, this 4E complex looks something like this and it can actually, it can actually bind with the guanine, the 5 prime cap. Let's say this is the 5 prime cap and it can actually bind with the 5 prime cap of the eukaryotic mRNA as you can see in this picture here, okay. And what it does actually, it not only does that and also this poly A tail is folded back to form a loop like structure like this. And this is very very important, not to start the translation. It will only start the translation once this loop is open. So this loop is formed due to the initiation factor 4F complex. Once this is in place, it will attach with the 43S pre-initiation complex. So we know what? This is the attachment and finally we know that the attachment will take place. So that is the second stage of attachment of mRNA. Now if you look at the third stage for the initiation of translation in eukaryotes. So this is the scenario, remember this is the mRNA which is attached now. This is the mRNA, remember and this mRNA is uh, now in place, it's attached but still the tRNA is not properly attached to the mRNA, uh, not properly attached to the codon, start codon here and the loop is still in place. So what will happen now is that 
they need to find exactly which is the start codon in the mRNA. Once they designate the start codon, then only this first FMET tRNA will be in the place of that AUG codon because this FMET tRNA is having a complementary anticodon to that AUG sequence, right? So now this third stage is the scanning for the start codon and the scanning start to occur as you can see the scanning is going on and scanning means nothing but this polyadenyl tail it start start moving from this towards this 5 prime to 3 prime direction that's called the scanning so scanning is going on 5 prime to 3 prime so as the scanning is going on and they find the place for AUG codon during that part once they find that Let's say they found this AUG here in this place. As long as they find it, then this tRNA, the FMET tRNA, will be placed properly by the help of hydrogen bonding between the codon and anticodon segment and they will be paired. Right? So this completes the scanning of the start codon. Right? As they complete this process and after this binding of the first FMET tRNA to the P side with the AUG codon, this EF this elongation factor 2, remember the elongation factor 2 was the factor to bring this first FMET tRNA. It will hydrolyze the GTP, place that tRNA properly and it will release the place. So it will release this particular scenario. After that, the fourth stage is the start phase. That is the assembly of the large subunit. So we are at this particular area now. Now what we want to do now? now they have assembled everything, they have found the start codon, uh, they properly positioned that tRNA, FMET tRNA. Now the stage is to bind with the 60S ribosome subunit. So this is the 60S ribosome subunit and once the 60S ribosome subunit comes in, along with another carrier, remember we need to carry, have some carrier initiation factor, it is the initiation factor 5. Initiation factor 5, usually it is 5B. It's also a GTPS protein, so it will bring the 60S complex at the place. And once the 60S complex is assembled with the 40S complex and the mRNA with the tRNA attached to it, all other factors are released, like initiation factor 3, initiation factor 1 are released, as well as this initiation factor 5, which just brought this 60S subunit will also release because the GTP will be hydrolyzed. Remember why these GTPs are required? because we need energy to bring a large subunit we need energy to bring a tRNA so for all this region we need to have the tRNA uh, I mean GTPS functionality in the protein so once we bring all this machinery in the place they need to hydrolyze uh, this uh, GTP into GDP and PI and then that elongation that initiation factor releases outside okay so that's how the this whole process works so after assembly of the 60s complex with the 40s complex all the other, all of these others like initiation factor 3, 5, 1, all of them are released. Okay. And then what we left ultimately, we left with a 60S subunit, a 40S subunit, an mRNA and a tRNA. And this is actually the translation initiation complex. That is called the 100S, actually in this case the 80S initiation complex for translation in, in eukaryotes. Okay. But if similarly, we know that in 70s initiation complex was shown in prokaryotes and that thing is also consisting of the 70s ribosome, mRNA and tRNA, nothing else. So that's how the assembly takes place, that's how the initiation takes place. Now there are a lot of proteins, lot of factors comes in and they, they just uh, went out. But this is the overview, the whole picture, that's why I broke it in small part because it looks like complicated. But the thing is really easy, 40s complex bind with the uh, with the uh, IF2 with the tRNA first, so it forms a 43S complex. This is the first stage. Second stage is the attachment of the mRNA with it. Remember the looping feature as well as the initiation factor 4F complex, which is very, very important. And the third stage is remember the scanning. And once they find the place, it will place that FMET tRNA. And then fourth stage is the assembly of 60S complex. So these are the different four stages. Though there are many other molecules, but still, you need to focus on how the whole process is actually working instead of naming all those different proteins. Don't think about that. Think about the whole process in your mind.